One thing that I found totally fascinating, and I wonder if this is still something that <laughs> people could learn from and do today, is that when you when you moved from Atlanta, where you were doing some some engineering, to uh, Los Angeles, you knew mm -hmm. that the way that you could kind of break in uh, to the industry was really just to kind of put yourself in the door of some of the best studios, just literally by sneaking in, by making yourself seem <laughs> like you uh, you had a right to be there. Uh, is that something right. that would really work for people today, or do you think that was kind of a bygone era when that ha when you were able to get away well, with that? You know what? I'll expand the question and give you a broader answer. Sure. Uh, I wasn't the only one of this Pensacola Place duo that snuck into places to further his <laughs> career. Um, Herb, who's um, one of the most intelligent people I've ever met, and and who, who I owe uh, my career to. Her was sneaking into lectures at the various well-known institutions of higher learning in L.A. just because he wanted to hear David Geffen or he wanted to hear Irving Azoff speak. So I think it's a tried-and-true method. Um, uh, for me, I never, I never thought about not being an engineer, engineer. I never thought about being an engineer. I just always wanted to be part of the recommendation process. And, mm -hmm. um, the the romantic notion that I'm sneaking into studios, I was just trying to get a quick bath and steal some fruit out of the lounge. That was pretty much my main <laughs> goal. And during that process, I met Herb. Um, Herb says I had a mold at the time. That's up for discussion. I don't think I did. <laughs> but I had my, my little Bon Jovi boots with my jeans tucked in. And, and Herb, uh, I'll, I'll let Herb take it from here because I, I think uh, while my version of the story is a little better, Herb is probably more accurate. Well, it's it's actually the same version. Um, one one of the things that I think, well, well, first of all, Dave is always so generous with credits, and the reality of it is, is we both have, I, from what we hear from other people, singular skills, but they they have a multiplier effect of a hundred when we're together, and we have been friends for twenty five or thirty years. I was his first manager, and we met both sneaking into a studio. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that uh, the way Dave was mixing his blood, I wanted to always be an executive in the record business. And frankly, the passion is no different. Um, and a lot of people get a whole lot of, you know, things misinterpreted about who's more passionate, who's more organic. The reality of any business of which only, you know, 1% of the folks get through Mm -hmm. is that you have to care an awful lot about it to put yourself through what it takes. You have to risk a lot. You have to know how to throw elbows. You have to learn a lot and learn on the fly. So Dave and I met each other at exactly the appropriate time. We were exactly at the same place. We had pretty similar aspirations. And so we took a shot together. And through some relationships that I had and through Dave's skill set, we got him in the most unlikely situation where this southern dude from Atlanta, um, you know, one of the most white looking men in the world, ended up <laughs> doing her brown. Yeah, yes, sort of latte. <laughs> um, mocha. Mocha or latte, it really works. Um, ended up doing a hip hop remix on Belle de Devoe that was about the best melange of rock and hip hop ever, and he stayed hot for 30 years from this unlikely beginning and that's kind of how we have managed our friendship and our relationship is just based on trust and and not having any fear and you know we haven't won all the time and but we, we've never been disconnected but this last one has been we're out of adjectives we're just utterly amazed utterly blessed and really committed to continuing to grow this thing yeah, I think one of the one of the threads there as well is luck, and I think that's that's one of the things that I think people who want to find themselves in this industry have a hard time coming to grips with is like, you know, it it, it kind of seems like a, your opportunity with the Belbid Devote Do Me Baby uh, song, you know, early on, that was obviously the door that allowed you to continue doing what you have been doing for 30 years. There's a little, there's a little amount of luck in, in getting that opportunity. Uh, and I think a lot of people have a hard time knowing that, you know, you can have talent to, uh, you know, as far as the day is long, but 
sometimes you need that lucky chance to come along to really propel you into hey, the spotlight hey, and put you in the right place. Hey, let me stop you for a minute because luck is a word that, that certainly is applicable to, to both Herb and I, but, but it, it, it has shortcomings in terms of its meaning. Um, mm -hmm. We weren't both sitting in our respective living rooms playing video games and suddenly <laughs> something did happen. Right. Um, you mentioned the opportunity that cliche comes to mind about luck is when preparation meets opportunity. But Herb and I were both out and about. We were both trying to, um, um, I don't know what we were trying to do. I just wanted to be out and about. I love studios, and and I think I think I think it, it's important to just go try to do something. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Herb, Herb, you can help me, but um, nothing good happens when you're not out and about. And uh, what does out and about mean? It, it can mean going to parties, going to studios, going to see live bands, um, decisions about moving, decisions about career, the same effort that you make can sometimes produce good results and bad results. So the process becomes knowing when to change that decision and make another decision. Luck, luck is something that you use in retrospect. When you're active and doing things, you don't know that moment that is luck. You right. just take the moment... Right and try to maximize that moment. Then you look back and go, wow, wasn't that luck? That's a term that you utilize afterwards. But there's a whole lot of people with lucky opportunities and just up at the opportunity. Yeah. They, they just didn't maximize. I, I, I messed up a few too. Well, we all have. I, I think that's part of it. So, um, look, Pensava's Place is about the most unlikely thing for, for us to do. Um, I wouldn't say that the circumstances was born out of we're lucky, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what we did is we took that opportunity and then um, we planned this to within an inch of its life to try to give it the most opportunity to be lucky <laughs> um, that we can, which is how I think you roll. And also I think that's how you roll after you've had some life experiences. So it's much harder when you're younger to sort of have that perspective. And that's where you take Dave's point. Be active, be out, expand your experience. Um, we, we often advise people to not just be the head down society. Right. You put your head in your phone, then lift your head up, get some contacts, get some contacts and some context, develop some relationships, know how to interact with people. In this game, particularly with visual media arts, and we, we think we sit at the intersection of what we call edutainment, um, it's not just going to be what you know technically. It's going to be how you interact with people and how you engage with people. So you kind of make your luck, and then you do something with it when it comes up. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Hey, Jason, um, as you know, uh, and, and, and by the way, compliments to you for knowing so much about us. Um, I hope you have a life outside of us. <laughs> so I, I, I try, I try. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, uh, I, I watch some of the professional poker players, and uh, they lose a lot of hands, but the great ones end up winning, and they end up ahead. And, and, sure. and it's not luck, it's putting the odds in your favor. In other words, it's managing your money in terms of gambling. It's, mm -hmm. it's not betting on crazy odds. It's knowing the odds. And uh, um, I, I just like to encourage people that are thinking about any profession, um, Put yourself, no matter how you can, in a position to, um, or touch on this, to, to meet other people that are like-minded. Use, sure. use the inspiration you get from those people and then let those people get you through the tough times. In, in the world of high finance, uh, uh, Ivy League education seems to be important, but I would argue that the relationships that you make while you're at those schools is more important than anything. And, uh, and then the alumni from those schools. So just being out, and uh, I think we beat this question to death. You got another one? <laughs>